In lesson 1, we looked at what the vector is, we looked at how to de define it, and we looked at a few concepts relating to the vector. Let us apply some of these concepts here to this example of vector addition. Notice that what we have here is a vector arranged in the form of a polygon, and it shows points P, Q, R, S, and T with vectors A, B, C, D, and E. So, vector going from P to T, for example, is the vector B. Now, we are asked to find the vector PR. So, we redraw the polygon and identify on the polygon the vector PR as shown. Now, notice that if you consider triangle PQR, then two of the vectors are going in one direction and one vector is going in the opposite direction. So you normally identify the vectors that are going in the same direction by observing that they are they are almost chasing each other. So the head of one vector is pointing to the tail of the other vector. So we say that they are chasing head to tail. In this case, we note that vectors C and D are chasing and therefore the only vector that is going in the opposite direction is the vector that we are trying to find PR. So we form our equation showing that PR is equal to C plus D. Um, to find vector RT, we use the same principle as before, where we identify the vector RT and we observe the triangle R, S, and T. Now note again that the two vectors that are chasing is RT and A and that is going in the opposite direction to vector E. So we can write the equation RT plus A is equal to E, therefore vector RT is equal to E minus A. Finally, we redraw the polygon once more and identify the vector of concern which is QS. We note from triangle QSR that the two vectors that are chasing are vectors D and E. So we can write immediately that vector QS is equal to D plus E. Um, typically how this, prob this is typical how this problem is done. Let us look at another example. In this example, example number three, we are given three points A, B, and C, and we are asked to use a vector method to prove that the points are collinear. Now, collinear simply means that we are to show that all three points fall on a straight line and we are to use a vector method to do it. Again, let us make a simple sketch of all three points as given and then further use another diagram to explain a few points about uh, vectors that are on a straight line. If you observe the diagram here, you will notice that vector AB and BC, if they are on a straight line, would obviously imply that they are going in the same direction. Certainly, we, based on our knowledge of, of the vector and how it's defined, we know that a vector has both a magnitude and a direction. So, if they have the same direction, then the only thing that could be different about the vectors, if they are collinear, is that they have different sizes or different magnitudes. So if we if we define the magnitude of vector AB to be X, then BC, the vector BC, would simply have a scaled up magnitude or the magnitude would be a constant multiplier times the magnitude of X. So the two, the two magnitudes would be related by a constant. Um, so in essence, the condition for collinearity is that if the two vectors are collinear, then they are related to each other by a scalar constant. Um, let us just proceed to identify the vectors as the position of the vectors rather using the position vector format, the web column vector format as shown. Um, all we're asked to do here is to identify find the, the vector BC, find the vector AB, and then look to see if they're, they are related by a constant. So if we find the vector AB, where AB is equal to B minus A, then 
vector a b is equal to 4 2 we find b c um, which is equal to c minus b and that vector is equal to 6 3 we note immediately that 6 3 is related to 4 2 by a constant where that constant is 1.5 so we have proved the conditions for collinearity by demonstrating that vector b c is equal to 1.5 times vector a b therefore all points are on a straight line or essentially points are collinear.